lot of uh, yes. bass fishing circuits. So, you know, good to have that back. We got some, you know, I know we got sports that are going to resume soon, and bass fishing is back, so... That's it. We're, we're just getting really back good. getting back into the groove yeah. of things. The best part is, though, is rod building has never stopped. That's true. That's, That's good. True. So uh, we're going to do uh, all about, you know, different bass builds tonight. We're going to talk to Terry, like, what's his favorite stuff, why he does a certain, uh, you know, maybe he does something with a weighted butt cap, maybe he does something with a tip top. Uh, you know, he's got a few little tips and tricks that he does, not only at home, but out on the road. Yeah. Because, you know, he's got to do some repair, of course, when he's out fishing the tournament trail. Um, what else? We're going to start off with doing a uh, kind of a how-to on how to put a uh, exposed reel seat onto your rod blank. Right. How to order the right size, how to measure correctly, yep. you know, if you already have your blank. Absolutely. Um, and, of course, this is my favorite seat. The ECSM. The ECSM. Yeah, we, all we, we all know about that. But uh, yeah, so uh, keep going. Yeah, and then uh, we'll show how to do that. Then we're also going to do, like you mentioned, the weighted butt cap, why to install it, yes. which rods you want to use it on, um, and yeah, what you know, kind of accessories you need, and uh, you know, right. the winding checks and all those little small details you need to put it together. Yeah, because you know, of course, we've got a weighted butt to uh, you know to help balance it. Uh, maybe if you want to have that tip feel a little bit lighter. You know, there's a reason for that, but then also, you know, you got to have a little aesthetics in there as well. So exactly. we want to be sure that it looks cool and it's functional as well. So, uh, yeah, I think, uh, I think we'll do that. I'm also going to show one other little trick, too. If you don't want to use the CRB weighted cap, I'm going to show you how to sneak a weight inside of there while still using, you know, maybe your MHX wind grips. So we're going to be doing that. And, of course, we're going to be doing some giveaways. Absolutely. We've got giveaways and, of course... Terry's on the show later, so yep. got a nice Q&A with him. Absolutely. So it gets your questions ready for, you know, uh, ask him what his favorite bass rod is yep. or, you know. Where he likes to fish, like talk yeah. about cooking, get him on the green egg. Uh, so, yeah, I think we got everybody ready. Is everybody ready to go? We've got uh, Taylor and Guffy and the guys in the war room, of course. Uh, Nick and Jay here with us. Guys, are we ready? You ready to run this? Let's hit it. There is nothing wrong with your television set. Do not attempt to adjust the picture. We are controlling transmission. All right, we're back. We are back. All right, hopefully everybody is kind of filtering in, kind of joining us here, as we were saying. Uh, it's the big show, Bass Builds. And uh, I got a few, we're going to be doing three giveaways, as usual, tonight. Yep. Give away what? Some, uh, we're going to do a little real seat action. Yeah, we got a CRB uh, GEC2, which is right here. Cool. So exposed seat that also, you know, you can use with a cool insert carbon fiber. Nice. Comes a couple of different colors. Absolutely. That's third place. Cool. Second place, we got the, that's a multi-option kit. Looks like a uh, flipping or punching rod. Yeah. Yeah, so a multi-option kit that comes with the guides, the real seat, handle, blank. Everything you need. Tip top, guides, yep. All yep. That. And then, of course, later on in the show, Terry will be on. The big show will be here. He's going to give away his very own Terry Scroggins Pro Tour kit. To those that uh, follow along, know him very well. You'll see over at mudhole.com, he has a whole section. Uh, you know, he's got his heavy cover stuff. He's got the stuff that he likes to throw, you know, half ounce jig on. He's got stuff that uh, he likes to get a little finessey with. Uh, because, yes, Mr. Florida, Mr. Big Bass can break out the spinning pole and make some people look silly with it. So that's awesome, too. But for the first demo, we are going to talk about how to install the Fuji ECSM seat. Yep. And tell us a little bit about how you go about that. Walk us through maybe you want to build a rod, you want to pick a real seat, you got the ECSM on your mind, uh, but you don't have any of your stuff yet. <clears throat> right, so what's cool about this seat is, for one, it does not require an arbor. Mm -hmm. So, you know, typically with like a barrel seat or, um, you know, a casting seat that you'd get in like a size 16, 17, 18, Right. They come with a much larger ID. Sure. You simply fit them to your rod, add a couple arbors, slide it in, good to go. With these exposed seats, 
exposed being this portion right here, right. which you can actually, you know, feel with your finger once it's mm -hmm. on the rod blank. These are really cool yep. because, um, obviously, like I said, no arbor, and they have a very tight fit. Now, in order to get that fit, you got to know what size to order. Absolutely. Because not only do they come in size 16 and 17, they also come in half size increments. Sure. You know, starting around nine millimeters yep. all the way up to 15 millimeters, I believe. Sure. And of course, you had mentioned there is a body size. Yes. So there is a size 16, which is a body size, which is pretty much what you see on any regular bass rod or maybe a light inshore, any kind of casting rod like that, that like you said, goes from nine to 15. But what happens when you get above there? Right. You go to a size 17 body, and then that 17 body is just overall the outside diameter is a little bit larger. It handles a little bit larger reel, maybe if it's a bigger round reel, uh, maybe if it is a low profile style reel, but it's one of those larger ones right. that they use for like musky uh, or you know larger inshore species. And then of course that goes from what, like 15 and a half to 17 or so? 17 to uh, 17 and a half, 18, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so that's when, when you said a size 16 or 17, that's where you start. Right. That's the first number yes. in the body. Okay, what yep. else? And, uh, and also, to just add on to what you said, if you have large hands, you know, there's some guys out there that just have big, you know, bare hands almost, Absolutely. right? Absolutely, right. So, if you struggle with, you know, if at the end of the day, you cast, 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 and your hands are kind of worn out, maybe your real seat's a little too small. So, sure. if you bulk that up, you know, could cut down the fatigue a little bit. Absolutely. But anyway. Because so, I know, too, on that 17, some guys do it on a spinning seat, right? Yeah, absolutely. You know, maybe, if, like you said, if, if maybe you're developing a little arthritis or you have an older, you know, guy or, uh, you know, female fisherman that, that just, that 16 reel seat can be a little small at times. So go to the 17. Yep. Good point. So cool. So starting out, you know, let's say you have your rod blank picked out, whether it's, you know, in your cart online or even if you have it at your house, that's even better, right? Yes. Most people probably haven't ordered their blank yet. They order everything at all one time, right? Yeah, yeah. So what's cool about this is, you know, say you want to put your handle at, we'll say what, I'll, your flipping stick is probably 11 inches from mm -hmm. the butt. Yep. <clears throat> so what's cool is we actually, on our resources page, offer, I think it's two inch increments. Yep, two inch increments. For all the MHX blanks, two inch increments from the butt up. And I think it goes out to what? 20 it's inches? It's 20 or 24 inches yeah, or something Yeah, it goes out like pretty that. far. So it will resemble this. So this is an MB843 uh, from the MHX line. It's a metallic red. It's one of my favorites. So what you'll see on the resources page, and they'll put a link in there, you will, uh, you'll be given a butt diameter. So you're going to get the OD of this, uh, which you know is probably somewhere around a half. Um, let me see. I got my little... So yeah, it is just a quick there is 0.588. Um, so you're gonna get the butt diameter. So that's gonna help you decide what fighting butts you need, um, depending on if you are using EVA, or if you're using cork. You know, some come uh, with a different ID on your fighting butt. Uh, you know, the MHX win ones, they all come, I think, in what, 375, Correct. I believe. Mm -hmm. uh, if you get cork, you know, typically cork only comes in a quarter inch, so that's 0.250. Um, but there are a lot of, you know, EVA grips. I mean, I, I remember back all the SGF or the SGFBEs or something like that, that they all come in like a 250, a 375, and a 500. Correct. So, you know, that really helps. And of course, you know, it cuts down on your working time and, and your glue up time. So you can get a butt to match that. And then every two inches here on the blank, I just have it taped just so you guys can see, kind of have a visual of what that really looks like. So when you think about it, you know, you're going to have a place, you know, about up here where your real seat's going to be, you know, there's going to be a measurement very close to that. Then if you need a foregrip, you need a rear grip, you know, in about 24 inches on pretty much any rod blank, you should be able to get you a butt, a rear grip, um, you know, a real seat and a foregrip or get very, very close to it. Yep. So that, that's a good point. That's the resources page. And of course, you know, there's that types of spacing. There's guide spacing. Correct. Uh, there's the common sense for all the fly blanks. Uh, there's a lot of stuff in that resources tab. We utilize that a lot. I mean, I was actually just helping somebody on Facebook. They came in with a question and, and said, you know, hey, I, 
I'm doing my first fly rod build and I need spacing for a nine foot five weight, what you got? Right. We can go right to that resources page, click on that link, you can have it in a PDF, you can email it to your you know, friend, you can print it, you can do any of that stuff and you'll have that spacing right at your fingertips. So that Super is a great Super helpful option. when you don't have the blank in your hands. Now, of course, okay. if you do, simple enough, take your calipers on there, measure it exactly at 11 inches, 10 inches, right. whatever it may be, and you're good to go. Exactly. Now, for sizing, we always want to err on the size of a little bit smaller. You know, yes. say your measurement comes in at right at half an inch, 0 0.500, right? Yep. Um, you know, which is going to be pretty large. Let's go with smaller. Let's say it's like uh, 350. Okay. Okay. So what we would do is, you know, you don't want to get a real seat that's going to be close or even over that 350 mark, right? right? You want to go a little bit smaller. Sure. Because what we're going to show in a minute is you can all, you can read these real seats out. Yep. They're made of like a graphite style material, yep. which you can use your, your extreme reamers, which, you know, chuck in a drill real quick, done. Um, but moral of the story is you want to go a little bit smaller. That way you can, you know, just like your cork grips, your EVA grips, you can ream them out a little bit and slide exactly. them down. It's perfect. Absolutely. And we'll kind of demo, uh, demonstrate that here real quick. So as Hunter was saying, we have, using the ECSM here, this is also what you would do for an ACSM um, if, you know, you like to use that seat. But uh, so if you get some of these and you forget what size they are, there is a little cheat because inside here, on kind of where the real seat transitions to where the, the foot goes in, there's like a little bit of like a kind of a swoop in there. Um, you can't probably see this, but there is the markings on the inside. So it will say that it is a 13.5. Um, this one is a 13 and that one is a 14. So if you do get a big pile of these, uh, you like to keep some of these on hand. Um, if you're building a lot with it, I recommend, you know, kind of always keeping your common sizes around because if somebody calls you up, it's like, hey, I want a, an MB 843. I want one built. I want an ECSM. I want this. I want that. You know, uh, having a little bit of stock on hand is, is always a good idea for right. sure. So I've got a blank here. This is the silver metallic uh, from MHX. And we're going to show kind of how the, uh, the spacing can progress. What size you got there? You got a 14. Okay. So yeah. go, go with the 14 first. So this would be an example of one that is too big, correct? Yep, absolutely. So, you know, keep in mind if you were up here, which is where you wanted your real seat, and it was maybe 14 or it was, you know, 14 and a quarter, you know, and, and then you buy, well, no, that would be if it was 13 and a half up here mm -hmm. and you bought a 14. So if it was 13 and a half up here, because we said you always want to err on the side of smaller. So if it was 13 and a half here and you bought a 14, this is probably what's going to happen. There's not really much of a fix for going larger because what will happen is, and this is going to be, you know, an example that is kind of an excessive example, but you can see there's a rattle in here and you can see that there's gaps. There's gaps all around this real seat that you'll catch your hand on or you catch your finger on and it's, it's annoying plus it's going to leave this real seat loose and it's not really a real seat that's really designed to have an arbor even though you technically could um, but it's just really not going to fit it properly, right? So let's get, uh, try, let's do the 13. 13, there we go. So now if we've got a 13, we're going to put it on. You can see where we're stopping now. Now, the best part about this is if it does stop up here where there's still a little bit of taper in the blank, there's very, very little wiggle. There is some, but there is very little wiggle up in the front of this real seat. So how to combat that is, and especially if you order just a smidge smaller, you don't technically have to order, you know, a full half size smaller, but what can happen is you know, you're in between those like, you know, 0.2 or 0.3 of a millimeter. You know, always order one down because we'll show you here, you can take and ream this out. So, you know, you see that's got a little bit of a wiggle to it, but the 13 and a half, we know. Bumble. Yeah, exactly. We know the 13 and a half is 
really pretty much perfect and it's snug there, it doesn't want to move and that's pretty much right where we want to be. Now I'm going to mark this just for just for fun's sake and of course I have uh, I brought the, the white one and the black one here for the silver metallic. Uh, sometimes the white's hard to see on some of these metallics and the black china marker does well or we have a red one too so that's always a nice a nice option. If y'all don't have all three sometimes it does make it easier when you do. So, all right, there's the 13 and a half. You had a 13 here. I'm going to get the drill out. Okay. I'm going to touch one of these guys up here a little bit. Is this the 13 and a half? All right. does not take much, right? Really doesn't take much, and you, and you see I didn't, whoop, that's going to fall. And you see I didn't go crazy with it. Probably could go a little more, because we're about halfway in, in between there. So almost all of the wiggle is out of that seat, but we can probably go a little more, because there's the back mark, the front mark is about here. So we can that's a, a good example bit. though, because it's you know it's kind of like your cork grips or your other grips too. You, you never want to really go over it. You want to go a little at a time, right? You know, and make sure you don't. Yeah, the last thing you want to do is turn your. If 13 and a half is perfect, last thing you want to do is turn a 13 into a 14, and then now you're back. And of course, you can always go this way a little bit. Go from that side. But again, don't go crazy with this. And then of course it will slide too. Some of these, I can't remember, this actually might be an 874. And the 874 does flatten out a little bit down here. So, so that, that is almost there. So anyway, I won't bore you guys with continuing to ream this, but here inside the trigger, you do have to be careful because if you start reaming on it, you will start to open this gap up a little bit, or you'll start to kind of like chew at the edge of that seat some. Just go slow. That's, that's just another reason not to. Um, and you know, I, I've used this term before, and I know it's a little confusing, but you go fast but slow at the same time. So run the drill wide open. It's just like when you're reaming cork or using that crafty cutter. You know, I always say, run the drill wide open and then slowly move the crafty cutter to cut it. Because if you put the crafty cutter on the cork and then you pull the trigger, then obviously it's going to chew at it. Same with this. If you get the reamer wedged in there and then you start trying to work on it, it's going to take pieces or it's going to scuff your reel seat up. What you want to do is get it going wide open and then just slowly go in there. So there you yeah. go. Cool. Yep. Easy enough. Easy enough. Now, there is one other thing I wanted to talk about when we're installing this stuff. So, when you look at the Arbors, this is on the Win uh, MHX grip, right? So, this is one of the ones we use. You can see my flipping stick down here has got the, it's got the lime green accent uh, MHX. That was actually before we even had the all black ones there. But, so this one actually. The tenon works very well with this, right? The tenon is, is a perfect fit. Now, there are some grips, whether it is a, um, some of the solid color winds have a little bit longer tenon. Uh, if you're turning your own grip, that's something to pay attention to is your tenon length. Now, granted, you can always cut that tenon off. Right. You know, you, you don't really have to worry about it, but I will say it is kind of a nice feature. Yeah. You know, if you're getting everything uh, situated and straight on the blank and, and things like that, having at least a little bit of a tenon to slide inside of that, uh, of that reel seat, I think it helps a little, yeah, absolutely. you know, especially with, you know, I mean, I would say, especially with the new builders, but shoot, I, mean, <laughs> I like it. Yeah. It, helps, it helps me, so I'm not gonna, not gonna call out the new builders on that. So I think that's a good, it's a good way to have it. Yeah, so. Like you said, you can always take it off if you need to, or just, Trim the top if the edge isn't fitting your real seat, you know, perfectly. Yeah. You know, there's there's a couple ways to do it. Well, because that ACSM does have a little bit different of a shape. You it know? does. I it think does. down here in the base of it, 
the tenon actually can't be as long, right? Yes, it has right. a little bit different fit because of the way that the, the trigger and the opening and mm -hmm. stuff like that are, so. Cool. There. Good deal. Mm -hmm. Go. We got any questions coming in? How, how is that coming? Because we do need to give some stuff away. Uh, we do want to check on some questions coming in. But uh, what we're going to do is we're going to do an ECSM handle kit as a giveaway. So let's also make sure that uh, what are we going to do? Third place, Fuji ECSM uh, real seat. And that is going to be coming out of Facebook. I'll take this one. Okay. Kevin. Kyle Machado. So, right on. Uh, Kevin, Kyle Machado. Congratulations. That is a Fuji ECSM exposed real seat. Uh, we're going to put together a handle kit for you. As always, with the, the people that win this stuff, if you don't have Facebook, you can send us an email uh, at support at mudhole.com, I think is what we're using most okay. of the time. Send it in, say you won, let's say through YouTube, right? Or if you have a Facebook account, run over to Facebook, come to the Mudhole Facebook page, send us, slide in our DMs, send us a message and say, hey, I'm Kevin, I won the ECSM real seat, and we'll get you set up and we'll get it headed your way. Cool. So, yep. So, uh, Michael said he tuned in a little late. How do you or where do you measure for the real seat on those, uh, on those seats? Uh, I think he maybe meant blank. But so, Michael, we're talking pretty much exclusively about exposed style seats. Yeah. You know, like the Fuji, ECSM, ACSM, those type of seats. So, short story, you basically want to get the measurement on your blank where the edge of the real seat, the back of it, is going to fall and, and sit against your rear grip, right? Sure. So, to get that, you can either use the resources tab, which has, you know, for all the MHX blanks, two inch increments up from the butt. So, you know, if you want to put it at 10 inches, you'll take that increment, whatever it may be, you know, 0 0.400 inches, whatever mm -hmm. it may be. Uh, obviously, com convert that to millimeters, right? right? Yep. And then that will give you your, um, the size real seats you need. Yep. You know, which, like we said, they do have two sizes uh, in the part number. So your first size will be the actual body size, 16 or 17 usually. Right. The second size will be your inside diameter, which is millimeters. Yes. Absolutely. Now, you know, back to when you're measuring the seat, like you said, we measure to here, right? Mm -hmm. That is where we throw a little caution because if the back of that real seat falls like, you know, just over, you know, like 14.1 or 14.2, do not order the next size up. Go the other direction. Right. Always order smaller because where this seat falls on the blank it falls this direction so you know up here probably won't be as wide as back here so you know and also in reality if if back here is saying it's 14 and up here is saying it's 13 and a half which probably will not happen because that would be one heck of a taper it'd be like a triangle but so if this was 14 and this is 13 and a half i'm going to order a 13 and a half every time right because if this is 13 and a half and you get a 14 seat, it is going to be, it's going to be a mess. So I'd rather buy the 13 and a half seat. Then when we slide it into place, we can ream it up a little bit. And you can also control how deep you ream this. You know, you can work kind of on the back half here and get that and then you're ready to rock. So definitely pay, it does take a little bit of attention to detail there to be sure that you're getting the right seat. Yeah. So, and of course, if you have any questions, always. Hunter or myself or one of the dozen customer service people will be able to help you out. We've touched on this probably 20 times since we've doing Facebook Live, maybe yeah. more. But in case you guys are wondering which measurement that we refer to so often, your, your handle length, I guess you could say, is always going to be from the butt of the rod blank. Now, typically, it's not going to have an actual butt cap on there, right? Right, because but, this one here, all this rubber portion of this is actually off the blank. So yes. the blank actually stops about here where the metal is. Yeah. So theoretically, it's from the butt of the blank itself, not a butt cap, to the back edge of your real seat. Um, you know, this measurement, the, your, your rear grip, your, the space in between your split grip, none of that matters whatsoever. 
Right. We're only talking about from the back of the edge of the reel seat to the butt, very end of your rod plank. Exactly, you know, because a lot of people will say, I'm ready to build my split grip, but how big do I make this space? This space is just happens mm -hmm. because of this. Yeah. So, no, that is also something, and I was going to touch base on it when we talk about these butt caps, especially this weighted one. You do have a little extra here. So if you look at my measurement, what did you say it was? Probably 11. 11. Yep. So 11, but remember, I'm 11 to the back edge of that butt because that's you know what's going to be here, that's what's going to be on my arm, things like that. But if you're measuring and you're on the rod blank, you're probably going to be at 10 and a half because the rod blank, you know, doesn't make its way all the way to the to the bottom. Whereas this one is a little bit different. You just barely have maybe a quarter of an inch, you know, of kind of curvature there that that goes from the rod blank out. So there's a lot less room for error with right. that one uh, as opposed to that CRB weighted butt cap there that they'll be sure to. Uh, Put a link into there because I think we've got uh, four or five colors of that, maybe yeah, more. I think it might maybe five or six, maybe. Yeah, yeah I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, Mark asks, when are y'all going to stock back up in MHX rods? Um, so as far as blanks go, we yeah. have a major, big shipment. I was gonna say we just talked about that coming in about two weeks ish. So yeah. if you do have a MHX blank that's out of stock, um, you know. Obviously not everyone's gonna come in that shipment, right? So if, you, if you're curious about it, be sure to reach out to our sales reps, uh, send us an email, call, uh, call the customer service department. But I will say, a lot of blanks will be back soon. I was gonna say, I've seen a lot of ETAs that are around that date. So yep. that is, that's fantastic. Uh, let's see, Raymond Styles Jr. I feel like I've seen that name before. Good to see you again, Raymond. I screwed up my split grip. Can you heat everything and start over with the same grip set and reel seat? So I'm gonna say yes, but I'm, there's an asterisk because you gotta be real careful. Um, there are some grips and reel seats and such that are easier than others. Um, and you know, some people have used the boil water with the steam trick, you know. Uh, the, the issue arises when you have materials like this wind polymer grip and you try to apply heat to it and the polymer, the EVA, that all pretty much acts like an insulator against the glue. So the hardest thing is going to get the inside of that uh, grip and the glue to heat up to a point where you can move it. Right. That's going to be a toughie. The real seat it depends because you know it is a kind of a polymer material that if you take a heat gun to this bad boy, you probably will warp it or booger it up a little bit. But it, it I, I'm not saying it can't be done. It, it can, but it it's going to take you. It's going to take you a minute. Now, I would also reach out to maybe some of the fellow rod builders in uh, the Facebook group, Mudhole Live Rod Builders Workshop. You know, put a few photos in there, reach out to us, uh, whether it's customer service, whether it's, you know, I help man uh, the Facebook page. So a lot of the questions that come in, whether it's me, whether it's Guffy, uh, you know, we kind of tag team and get in there together and, and help everybody out. So some of the technical stuff like that, I have myself boogered up some split grips, some real seats. Um, you know, I glued up one one time and wanted to change a butt cap and realized that I was going to have a problem with the split grip and I just then now fished an MB843 that was 611 instead of 7 foot <laughs> because I had really no choice except to just cut the butt off, cut an inch off the blank and then add another thing. So, yeah. you know, hey, whatever. We've all been there, trust me, Raymond. So, uh, send us a few pictures, you know, if it's a metal reel seat, that actually makes it a little easier um, or if you know, uh, we might be able to come up with something. Whether we can help you extend a blank, trim a blank back, uh, you know, reach out. And especially, I look today, that Mudhole Live uh, Rod Builders Workshop page, I think now has over 8,000. Wow. Which, that's huge for, for a community. And yeah. I mean, that is constant activity, constant activity. So, and we really appreciate that for everybody that, if you're watching the show and you are not a member, I'm not going to say you're missing out, but you're missing out. Yeah. So, 
All right, I'll do this question and we'll move on to yep. Witty Butt Caps. Uh, William, what kind of reel seats do you want to use for large striper fishing on a medium heavy rod? <laughs> All right, William, so assuming you're probably going to be using a pretty decent sized reel, mm -hmm. um, what do you say? Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, you're so, using uh, like a larger round reel or... A big six, five, six thousand, yeah. four thousand reel. Yeah, so I mean, so, probably like an 18 or something. So, uh, William, if it's like a spinning rod, um, I'd probably use at least maybe a 17 or 18 size, mm -hmm. you know, barrel spinning seat. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're using a casting, I'd probably opt, opt for like a, you know, a size 17 body size um, exposed seat, like the ECSM. Yep. You know? Um, if it's a non-exposed casting seat, I'd probably go with a 17 or 18. Right, exactly. And, and like Hunter was saying, you know, if it's a real seat that is not fitted, you have a little bit less to worry about and more, you know, just how the body fit, fits in your hand. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, those are, those are both. I mean, that's what I would, I would have to agree with you there. Yeah. On, a, on a pretty big, you know, striper fishing on a medium heavy, I mean, that could be anything from flipping blank to, I mean, you've seen we've run a, I think we ran an 18 on the FP9, the FP937 that we took offshore. Yep. I think we ran an 18 seat on it because we built that spinning. Gotcha. So we did that with the vertical jigging grips and, and all that stuff. So that would be, that would probably be a, a pretty cool rod blank to do this. Yep. So um, you want to move on? Yeah. What do you think? So all right. Actually, let me hit this one real quick. Sure. John, with summer coming, I'm in need of a new frog rod. Well, you've come to the right place. Right now, I'm thinking about the 885, but I wanted to see if you had any recommendations. I would go with your gut on that one. The 885 is an absolutely fantastic frog rod for the heavier or heaviest of stuff. Um, if you are not throwing, you know, over super, super heavy mats like at Gunnersville or, you know, through the gnarliest, you know, buggy whips and Kissimmee grass and stuff that we've got uh, on Okeechobee or, or Toho or, or some of those places, you know, probably go with an 874 if you like that kind of, you know, I'm not a guy that likes a 7.6. I even take some of the CV blanks like a 907. I know you do the same thing. Mm -hmm. We cut them a little bit. So we cut from the button, bring it down to a 7.3. The FP885 is a 7.4. So I'm somebody that would rather have a 7.3 or a 7.4. Uh, but of course, I'm going to lean on the 885, which handles super heavy frog stuff. It handles the whopper plopper very, very well. Uh, I even throw the bull shad with it, the bull herring with it. Um, and then, of course, if you don't need the heaviest of heavy, it's MB874, which will literally get anything else done, whether you're throwing a Big Easy, one of those mag speed worms, uh, a frog, of course. Uh, or even up to like a one ounce swim bait or a uh, one ounce Carolina rig. So nailed it. Yep. I would it. just I just buy both, John. <laughs> yeah, I would just both. get both get because three of both. I <laughs> have to carry both of those. And the best thing is, is both of those blanks come in metallics, so you got 14 color options to choose from. Yep. All right. Cool. Let's move on. I just saw the frog right. I did. Kind of. It yeah, winked at me. One. It winked at me. All right. Cool. Let's talk about the fighting butt. Okay. So why would we? put extra weight on our rod. That's usually the first question, like, you know, why in the world would we do that? Well, my theory is always, I'd rather have a rod that actually might weigh a little bit more, but is balanced, rather than have one that weighs less that's not balanced. Sure. Because think about it, I mean, it, it, you're holding that rod right in the palm of your hand, right? That's all you're doing all day. Yep. Majority of the weight is actually, most of the time, especially on longer rods, it's out towards the tip section. Sure. It's, it's from, you know, this third or this quarter of the rod that way, right? right? So you want to counteract that weight and put it in the butt section. Yep. So, and there's a couple ways you can do that, right? One of them is the, uh, the aluminum fighting butt. Mm -hmm. uh, like the, we, yep, right this here, guy. the blue one. Really Pull sharp. Pull the blue. Yeah, sharp color. Yeah. So that's one way to do it. And we do this a lot with our flipping sticks, especially. Mm -hmm. You know, it, this thing weighs what? A little over an ounce? Just over an ounce. Yeah. I know it doesn't feel like it. We actually talked about that <laughs> earlier. I know it doesn't feel like it, but it is, it's, it's right there about an ounce. Now, as you said, this is one here. This is actually on the FP936. So there's one right there that we actually, I finished off with a red trim ring uh, because I'm actually got one of those old school uh, Gen 2 Revo SX's here, which you can see that red's faded out a little out of that one. It hasn't faded out of this. So 
That's just, I try to get a little matchy-matchy. That's really all that is. But I did put that on here. Now, you made a great point. And this will start arguments in rod building rooms and, and stuff the world over, right? That's easy. Yeah, that's easy. So you said balance. Yeah. We're not talking, when we talk about balancing a rod, we're not talking about the old, like, I'm going to put my finger here, <laughs> and I'm going to do one of these, and it needs to balance right there. We're not talking that type of balance. I'm not saying that balance is wrong, because there are times and places for that kind of balance. Right. The type of balance I'm talking about is when you've got seven nine flipping stick you got the big weight on here that's one and a half it's really really nice when you are taking this and you're flipping it swing it up to you flip it like that maybe one two hop pick it right back up for me the rod goes down and comes up maybe one two hop like that and it's coming right back i don't want my wrist to have to fight this rod tip all day long so for me, you know, if you hold this here or however you want it, I want something that has a little bit lighter in the tip for this, right? Whereas maybe if you are a cranking guy mm -hmm. and you're throwing, you know, one of them big 10XDs and you're just, you know, out on a ledge all day long and you're reeling it down here like this, I, you probably don't want a weighted butt in there. You know, you want you know, heavier out near the tip because that's where the rod's going to live. There's no reason to fight where that rod's going to live all day right. long, um, especially in a drop shot rod. You know, if you're casting it out and you're like this all day, if that's how you fish a drop shot, then why would you want it to balance perfectly level if you're going to hold the rod like this all day long? So those are just some things to think about. And I'm not saying that that is right or that is wrong. But you start to pick up on these things, right? You know, your dad actually used to fish with us sometimes, and he would watch how the rod flexes or watch how he casts and go, well, you know, you're doing this all day long. Why did you do that to build that rod? And we would go, you got me, Bob. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> you know, you got me. And then you, then you go through, and, and you're like, oh, well, yeah, maybe I, should, maybe I should do that. And then you realize, like, ah, yeah, there's really no reason to do that when I should be doing this because it does make your life easier. So when you mention balance, that's what we're talking about at home. Balance the rod to how you're going to fish it because there's never going to be a time where that rod is going to be down. You know, it's just, yeah. it's just not. Yeah. And each rod is different too. And, and the reason that we you know, keep talking about flipping sticks, well, for one, they're obviously going to be longer. They're anywhere from seven, six to eight foot, you know, for most people. Yep. Um, number two, we use micro guides almost exclusively on these, right. you know, and even though we are using 12, 13 guides, mm -hmm. you know, they're super, super tiny. They weigh yep. nothing. Absolutely. So that's, you know, you're, it's even becoming, you know, almost more tip heavy. I mean, and like I said, I know we're using really tiny guides, but you know, that it does add up a little bit at a time, yeah. right? Well, it's just a but, lot of blank. And, and the blank itself. And yeah. you're using, you know, it's a 936, 937. It's, it's a big diameter. It's it's a lot of weight. So yeah. And you know, even though we are using an ounce, sometimes that's not even quite enough to really balance it out. For sure. Yeah. I mean, if you know, someone uh, Ronald asked a question there, what blank would you recommend for punching mats? And you know, there's a we have seen a lot of different mats. You know, if you, if you travel around, it's you know, there's a mat that you can punch with a one ounce, and there's a mat that you can barely get through with like a BB cricket and a two ounce. So you know. That's why we have an 885 or a 935. That's why we have a 936, and that's why we have a 937. Um, you know, whether you're pitching around a half ounce, you know, maybe, maybe you have that fat ace, you know, in, in Okeechobee, and you want to pitch it around some buggy whips with a half ounce or a 3 8 ounce tungsten, you know, but you still want heavy, heavier rod, you can throw an 885 with that. Mm -hmm. You know, so you can throw almost up to a one ounce on that 885 flipping it like I will flip like a medlock jig on that 885 um, because I can be more accurate because it's 7.4 then when I go to just either you know punching or, or doing some stuff like that I go to the 936 with it being 7.9 and I typically fish a one ounce to a one and a half that's just a range right and then if I have to go above that I go to the 937 uh, but the 937 is a little more rangy. You know, I can, we can flip just a one ounce on a 937. Uh, 
sometimes that's what you have. You know, sometimes you need one bait on one and one on the other with the same weight, and that's that's just what you have. But yep. you know, if somebody said, "Well, all I'm going to do all day long is flip a two ounce weight," then you got to go with a 937. I just right. think that's a little bit that's yep. just better for that. So, Ronald, that's what you got to decide, bud. You just got to figure out, you know, when you're fig figuring out what you want to, what match you want to punch, just go to your tungsten box. Tell me what you flip the most. That's going to help direct you into that blank. Yep. So, cool. All right. So let's talk about these aluminum fighting butts before we get out of hand here. All right, so you can see, like I said, CRB, aluminum fighting butt. We've got the AAWC, right? That's what this is. A lot of colors, a lot of sizes. We've got them um, like red, purple, silver, black, and then we also have matte finish ones. Mm -hmm. We have matte black, matte silver. Like matte gunmetal, gun, gun smoke, gun smoke. Gun metal, yeah. yeah. So there's a lot of options. If if you can't find a color with this one, that one's on you. So what we do though is this is a pretty pretty large inner diameter on this. <clears throat> I'll give it to you here straight. So we're looking at about a 756. So that's three quarters of an inch. It's a pretty good size. The good part about that is, though, is you know you can get it on a musky blank if you need to add some weight to a musky blank. You can get on a flipping stick, but you have to arbor it. So let's talk about the arbors here real quick. So you know me, I'm a tape arbor guy. We've been over this. What I tend to do is is I will use a double tape arbor on the back with a little bit of blank showing in between. Okay. Now you're going to ask me why I have some thread on here, and I'll tell you why in a minute. But I'm actually using a larger thickness of tape just so you guys can see this at home. This is actually the quarter inch tape and it's got probably just enough space in here. I scuff the blank a little and then I scuff the inside of that because that is an aluminum. So it just helps with the adhesion when you put the propase in there. So put two, uh, two arbors here. Typically, though, I'll use either both uh, sizes smaller or one and one a little bit smaller just to make sure you get maximum blank contact, blank contact there. All right. So now, though, what we have to do is we have to get a winding check that looks good with this thing. Now, this AAWC was not designed for this butt. This was just one of those deals where you and I were walking around the warehouse, and we wanted to use this but we wanted to figure out how to make a transition from three quarters of an inch down to, you know, 0.6 or 0.5 or whatever that this blank is. Now, some of these larger winding checks, this is a 16. So what you will find sometimes is, I think I got a 15 here somewhere. I think this one's a 15. So what you'll find is that 15 is not going to quite get there, right? Now, I know that because I've already measured it, but it looks like it's stopping because of the thread, but it actually won't close that gap. So um, that 15 won't quite get there. So you're going to have to go to a 16. Now, the 16 is like a little too big. And of course, in a perfect world, we'd have you know winding checks in every you know, two tenths of a millimeter, but that of course is not going to happen. Now, what I did is I actually put two layers of thread here. Um, we have done this when you kind of want to tie it all into a build. So it's just like doing an under wrap over wrap. I laid down size A in this uh, green here, and that green actually matches the green in the MHX grip. So that's a color fast there. That you can either use pea soup. Or what's the other one? It's 507 or 50. It's 501 and 507. I, oh yeah, Kiwi. Nice. Bang. Cameraman's got it going on. Oh, Nick, he's got it. I can see it's written on his hand. <laughs> um, so we've got either Kiwi or pea soup there, and that matches the green in the MHX. Both of them match. Uh, and then that's size A, and I overwrapped that with size D in solid white, both color fast just to give, and you can see when we, when we put this down, just to give it kind of a cool look, right? 
So we got the gloss black here, we got the gloss purple, and then we got a little bit of a white trim, and then we have the green that's going to tie that in. And it kind of looks neat when you put finish on it. Everything closes up nicely because you'll have decals down here. You can run some other trim bands. Uh, you could actually tie in, if you've got a loose winding check back here, you can tie in a cross ramp. You can do one of the famous Hunter McCamey specials. Do a cross wrap here on this blank, and then it'll actually snug that winding check down. Yep. So, you know, there's a lot of options here. Don't get discouraged if you've got a winding check that's maybe a little too big. That's how you would put that together. So, again, these are the CRB weighted butts. Do you a double arbor, put them on there, and the AAWC in the larger sizes, uh, the 15, 16, I think the 14 even looks good too. 14, 15, 16 millimeters. They look great with this, this fighting butt here. So, and then from there, all you really have to do is choose your rear grip and your foregrip. Um, you know, you can use that if you want a longer handle like EVA and just taper your EVA down. We do have some tapered rear grips that'll come right down to that. Yeah, we've done that with, um, gosh, what blank was it? It was one of the largest uh, CB blanks, like a 968 maybe? Yeah, I think we did that. I did a full. You helped me do a full. Uh, yeah, full EVA, EVA. Yeah, and we tapered it down to the uh, the butt grip or the uh, butt cap. Was that Sorry. when you were throwing that giant spoon? Yes. Yeah, I went to Kentucky Lake. And the 10XD, yeah. Yeah, you were yep. throwing that big spoon. So yeah, <clears throat> there's there's a lot of options there with that. So that's that's how you put that on there. So now we've got to give away. What are we giving away? Something? Is there anything else there that we're missing? We want to do. Uh, oh, real quick, I want to talk about. If you still want to use your win fighting butt, mm -hmm. but you want weight in the butt. Because I get it. Some people might not want that weighted butt cap. So there's a couple options. The one option that I always use that I know a number of y'all have seen if you followed the show for a little bit, which, by the way, you know this is four years? Our first episode ever was June 6th. Four years ago. Wow. We saw, I saw that come up on the time hop or whatever that is. So yeah, Pretty if cool. you guys started with us four years ago <laughs> to see where we are now, I apologize what it was like back then <laughs> because whoa. Anyway, all right, so I've got the box here. You can go through and yeah, you know, it, it can be expensive if you want to use a tungsten weight, but you know, if you're going to build a really, really nice fishing rod, you might as well use something nice. So take a tungsten weight, this is a three quarters of an ounce. Now, I also use what they call finesse weights, and I get them at Bass Pro Shops. Now, that finesse weight is a perfectly cylindrical weight, and they come from like a half up to a one ounce, and you've seen me, I've arbored them up. You can do the same with this. I would just use the thin tape, and you arbor this up, stack glue in, and put this right in the fighting butt or right in, I'm sorry, in the butt of the fishing rod, right, of the blank. So you would arbor it up, and you'd put it right in the blank. Now you can see that's a three quarters of an ounce. That would go in there and, you know, it'll slide up here, and you don't want that to have happen. So make sure you arbor this to fit snug, add some pro paste in first, then take this and add it in. Now, what you have to do, or your fighting butt will back off, is, let me put this up in my little handy dandy deal here. So the good thing about, you know, using something right out of your tackle box is, you know, you probably are like me, I've got something from a 1 16th all the way up to two ounces. So, you know, you can kind of pick and do whatever you want. And the best way to do it is actually just tape that weight to the outside of the blank. And then you can try, you know, have your reel seat, have your rear grip. Your fighting butt doesn't need to go on till the end if you want. So just tape those up and uh, tape them up and you'll be able to kind of get a feel for it. Go out in the yard, pitch the big weight around a little bit and see which one you like. Now, what you really need to do though is, this is our, what's the part number on this guy? I'm putting you on the spot. CP114. 1146? Four, Something uh, like that. All right. So this is kind of a, the thread pack kit thing. It's got a thread burnishing tool, it's got snips in it, and it has this guy, the pick, which is great for working with thread. It's also very good 
if you need to punch a hole in this fighting butt. So you actually want to take and you want to punch a hole right in the center of it, right? So what this is going to do is it's actually going to be like a little bit of a relief valve on the back. When that, uh, when the rear end of that blank is completely sealed up tight and you go to put this on, it'll actually back it off. Yep. Because keep in mind, you know, the rod blank is, most rod blanks are hollow all the way to the end until you put a tip top on it or until you plug the butt like that. So definitely poke you a hole in the back here. Nobody's going to notice this. I mean, you might know it, but the, the glue will fill it in. You'll push it on. You'll see a little bit of glue kind of come out there. That means you know you're good. And I actually, when I glue it up, I stand the rod up to make sure because it, it typically won't lift, won't lift the whole you know, rod off there. Right. So that is a good tip if you're doing it with a weight in the butt. It's also a good tip if you have to come in and re-grip a rod. We've done that before. Right. If you've got your tip top on there and the rod blank is sealed off and you try to put this on, it will back off. So, yep. Cool. That's it. Yeah, that's definitely a good option for uh, people yep. that do not want to use the aluminum fighting butt. Yeah, exactly. They want to maintain, you know, the wind grips or cork. Yeah, or and you can vary, the, you know, the amount of weight you put in there, too. You know, you don't have to put that full ounce. You can put a quarter ounce, half ounce, you know. Yeah, and you know, especially that, that gets involved when you got like a drop shot rod. You know, you got spinning rods that that big one ounce is just, no, that's not the it. deal. Yep. Not the deal. Cool. Let's do a giveaway. What do we got here? We have a multi option. Uh, I think this is a flipping and pitching rod kit. Mm hmm. Um, yep. Let's Plated get... fighting butt, winding check set. Uh, yeah, so, you know, that's, that's going to be the good thing. We'll, we'll have the fighting butt, the weighted butt. If you cool. want. Uh, so the, yeah. the runner-up prize, a flipping stick multi-option rod kit is William Kennedy from Ooh, YouTube. Straight out of YouTube. William Kennedy. I think we answered his question a few minutes ago. Sounds familiar. Perfect. That's awesome. Good deal. Congratulations, awesome. William. Good deal. All right. So now what we're going to do is we did a little, did a little chit-chat with the big show. Uh, the other day, he came in. We tried to get on the water, tried to do a little of that. Uh, if you have been watching the weather for the last, I don't know, month, we got plenty of rain here in Florida, and, of course, we got interrupted. Um, it's been brutal, but we tried to get out on the water the other day. Uh, it didn't happen, but, of course, he's down here fishing the heavy hitters, came into the shop, had to get some stuff so he could, uh, you know, build a few new rods, we talked about what he built, how he's going to fish it, what he's been up to lately. So uh, let's go see what the big show had to say when he was in the showroom. Hey guys, Chris here in the Mudhole showroom. And of course, I got special guests with me, big show Terry Scroggins. He is passing through because you got a big event coming. Which one are you fishing now? I'm headed to Heavy Hitters down in Kissimmee, but I'm going to tell you what, it's so cool that the store is open back up. You've always been online through the COVID-19. June the 1st, they opened the store back up. That's so cool. I can swing by, get what I need, and strike on down to Kissimmee. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I know you swing in a couple times during the year, you know, whether you need to pick up something for a repair, whether you need to pick up something to build. Um, you know, so what did you build specific for that heavy hitters event? I've got five or six rods that I, I really, I'm thinking real good about. Yep. And, uh, you know, anytime I go to Kissimmee, anytime I go anywhere in Florida, there's grass. The 936 is like my go-to rod. This is an all-purpose flipping rod. Right. If I'm flipping pads, flipping kissimmee grass, flipping mats, reeds, whatever, this is, I'm gonna have this in my hand. Absolutely, you know, because like you said, there is all of that. I mean, you know, you kind of have any vegetation you want at your disposal from hydrilla mats to reeds to, to anything. And, and that FP 936 is a favorite of mine oh, as well. It's, it's an awesome rod. Then I got a, a 937, so when I get no super, super heavy mats, you go to an ounce and a half, two ounce, you know, tungsten right. sinkers. Get the big one. Get the big, get the big stick out, the 937. So most of the time I got the 936, when I come to that special mat, I always got a 937 laying there just for that. Yeah, that's a that's a great one-two punch mm -hmm. for the punching. Yeah, both of those 65-pound braid, lock the drag down, just it's just you and them, you know. But you look at the weather, we got a tropical depression coming in, nothing but rain for the next five or six days. So I got me a frog tied on. You know, um, I've got this on an 874, which is, I love this rod for just throwing a frog around open water. Now, if I get in real thick stuff, I'll go to the 885. 
Sure. But for just general all-purpose frog fishing, the 874, I, I love this rod for doing that. You know, you get a little bit extra length with that 874, so that's a 7.3. Yep. Being a four power is going to be a heavy. And then, of course, like you said, when you need to beef it up a little bit. If you're going to make long casts out through a whole bunch of stuff, you know, 885, they don't get no better than that. Exactly. So, I mean, those are excellent for frog. Uh, you know, throwing maybe a big easy, you know, something like that. Any of the heavy cover stuff where you're going to winch a big bass out of that. So now you've got some other stuff here too now. Now I've, I've got a little tricky on you here. This is actually a uh, 843, so it's a seven foot rod, power three. Okay. I took and cut two inches out of the butt end of it, right. so I made it a 610, sure. power three to throw pop, prop baits on it. You know, the shorter rod, you're more accurate. This style of bait, I'm gonna throw it in holes in the high drill, grass lines and things like that. So I want a little shorter rod. Sure. I Man, this thing just, feel that thing. It just got, feels yeah. so good in your hand. And that's about it, you know, and a, and a great option what you were saying when you cut it a little shorter, because we do some of that when we're throwing like a top water bait and we're walking it. You know, uh, depending on your height, you know, I mean, I'm a little taller, some guys are a little shorter. You get that rod tip down in the water, it can be frustrating. Yeah. So if you take a rod that you love, which is MB843 is one of those that's, it's a standard, right? Yeah. And then you take and cut a little bit out of it, and now you can do pretty much any top water stuff with it. And you know, throwing top water is you don't want a cranking rod for that. You want a rod that's, that don't have a whole lot of power, but it's got a little bit of power into it. So you want to be able to snap your bait, make it work right, and you're fishing around heavy cover. So when a fish does come up and bite it, you don't want to, you know, a noodle rod. You want to be able to get him away from the stuff. So of course. 843 is perfect for that. And, and you know that that's another great, uh, you know, tip there for the, the people at home because. You know, that's why you build what you build. You do it for a very specific reason. You know, that is a great, uh, it's a great example of that. And, and I know too, you do some other things as well. You've got a trap on this rod and this is kind of a unique build as well. It is, it is. We got a, a 845 that's a super, super great crankbait rod. Right. But I wanted something just a little different. So I took a 906, which is seven and a half feet long. Right. Power six cranking rod in the cranking series. I took and cut six inches out of the butt of this. So I got a seven foot cranking rod that actually made this out of a 906. Right. And it's just got a lot, a whole bunch of parabolic bend in it. So when you hook a, you know, you got treble hooks, you're out in open water, you hook the fish, it's just got so much, so much bend parabolic, it's just, man, you can't hardly lose one of them. But then you still get that little bit extra power because it is the it six is. power in the it cranking. Is. So, you know, 845 is, is super good for, you know, square bills and, and even, even a, a you know, half ounce lipless, it's, it's good for that. But I, I throw this little bit heavier crankbaits, you know, your, your 12 to 14 foot diving baits. And sure. I've got this on here because we've got all this rain and we got, we'll got we probably have a lot of current coming down Absolutely. the river. So I'll be hopping a trap down there. Without a doubt. Just a little bit stronger rod for that in the current. So that's what this is good for. Perfect. Now, speaking of the Kissimmee Chain of Lakes where y'all are headed, you got a favorite? I mean, you know, there, <laughs> there's a whole thing. So you got Toho and Cypress. Uh, Hatchnahal, and then of course you got the big one at the bottom, which is Kissimmee. Yeah. You yeah. got a favorite? I've won a bunch of tournaments down there and I've won tournaments off of every lake, you know? Sure. <laughs> so it's hard to pick a favorite. Um, looking at these weather conditions, uh, man, it's possible the current will be flowing. So if, yeah. <laughs> if there's average current, it's hard to get out of the current. For so. sure. Yeah, you don't want to give too much away, yeah. but ab absolutely. I, I know yeah. where your head's at for sure. I mean, that's those are great options, great tips. Uh, Terry, we appreciate you coming in, uh, you know, talking about uh, specific builds, why you do it. And uh, I think it's, uh, you know, we'll take it back up to the studio. We'll get you some more stuff. And you know, it's so cool when you custom build your own stuff that you can make anything you want the way you want it. That's, that's what's so cool about doing this. Absolutely. And that's, you know, that's how you're going to win that big money. Hopefully. All right, man. Well, good. Uh, we'll get back up in the studio, but I appreciate, as always, cool. you joining us, man. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Yeah, I gotta tell you what, that was that was pretty cool. That was neat. That was a big show. Super here. cool, yeah. You know, it's it's always nice when you get to pick some of these guys' brain that it's what they do. Yeah. And they've done it for 20 years. A lot I of mean, knowledge for sure. I don't know. I think he's won like over two million dollars <laughs> or something like that. I mean, Crazy. I'm talking that is somebody that you really want to pick their brain, ask them why they fish it, how they fish it, why they, you know, because he's been repairing rods for longer than he's built rods, so. And uh, I don't know. I guess we'll just let him tell you about it. So, all right, everybody, we got him right here. The big Man, show. Hey, Terry's on, What's up, guys? How you He's doing? He's in here. Hey. How you doing? I'm good, man. I think you just, you just came for the pizza, right? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Good deal. Whoop, yeah. there we are. So, Terry, tell us, tell us a little bit why you're down here. I know we talked about it in the clip. So you're fishing the MLF heavy hitters, right? Yeah, so we got the heavy hitters going on in Kissimmee, Florida this week. Um, it's a pretty neat tournament. So. Uh, 
the term split up in a, B, a group and B group. So you got 40 okay. guys in A group, 40 guys in the B group. Okay. Um, so that makes the first round. The, the top 20 of each group move on to the next round. Mm -hmm. So the first round, Big Fish is $25,000. Wow. Pretty good purse. If you make that round, big, big Fish purse for the second round is $50,000. Gets better. If you make the championship round, $100,000. For the Big Fish. For the Big Fish. And then you still got the tournament payout as well. Sure, so sure. Uh, there's a lot of big money up for grabs right there. And um, man, the first day I didn't do so good. So I got, I got my work cut out to catch back up. Hey, that's First all of right. all, um, you know Mark Rose, he, he set the bar pretty high. He caught a 9-2 yesterday. Wow. And I think he caught it on a spinner rod, didn't he? He caught it on a spinner <laughs> rod, I think. I've seen the highlight reels. Like, yeah. yeah, on a spinner rod. Like, I'm like, I'm leaving my spinner rods at home. I'm going to big fish fishing, and here he is and catches a 9-2 on a spinner rod. So um, yeah, the, the neat thing about Kissimmee is it's full of big fish, okay. and you're just one cast or one flip away from $25,000 tomorrow. So, For sure. Yeah, just go get it. Absolutely. Now, and of course, we've got to be careful. We, we can't really talk about much, uh, you know, so. Well, I can tell you something. You just can't tell me anything. <laughs> okay, but I don't right. want to say nothing because somebody's watching this, one of these other guys. I was going to say, I'm you know, tell them something, all, the, so. all the thousands yeah, of uh, professional careful. anglers out there that are yeah, watching this right yeah. now. So, but yeah, exactly. I mean, so we've talked a little bit about, you know, what you like to do. And of course, we know what you like to do. But so, you know, you've got a number of different options. You've got Toho, you got Hatchnall, you got Cypress, you got Kissimmee. Of course, for those that don't know, um, Toho's at the top. So, yeah, so you got Toho at the top, you got Cypress, you got Hatchnall, you got Kissimmee. Then you can go through Tiger Creek into Tiger Lake, and then you can go right. into Rosalie, but you can't right now because the water's too low. Okay. Um, you can go into Tiger because I've been over there. It's kind of kind of tricky getting through there, but you sure. can make it to Tiger yeah, Lake. Yeah, it can get a little hairy. I, I like to look at all of it, you know. Well, so why not? Why I've not? been around down there. Um, now, are yeah. we all allowed to lock through to the bottom? Yes. Past 60? You can't go past 60. <laughs> okay. Um, and, and right now, it looks like Toho and, and Cypress is probably the the two lakes to be, but I'm, tomorrow I'm going to run all of it again. I'm just, I'm just that way. So. I mean, why not? You yeah, know, why you not? fill it full yeah. of fuel and let it yeah, rip. Yeah, let it rip. Yeah, so for those that don't know, with Toho being at the top, there is a lock. So there's, I mean, I know we've probably jammed more boats in there that should have been. I've heard more fiberglass cracking at lock. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, so you man. can get somewhere between like, what, 12 or 15 uh, well, boats yeah, in there? Well, I think we've had 17 in there before. Yeah. But, yeah. You know, the, over the years, the boats have gotten bigger and bigger. Oh, so course. now about 15 is about where you start cracking glass. So. Sure, sure, exactly, yeah, and cowlings and all that <laughs> that's stuff. That's right. So yeah, when you leave tow, you actually have to lock. You lock out, and then the rest of the way down, like you said, Hatchin Hall, Cypress, and Kissimmee, there's no more locks there. No. So that's, that's always an interesting, you know, water starts running and moving. We've had a lot of rain, things like that. So that's always, a, uh, that's always an interesting thing. So let's jump over here. Joshua ramey has got a question. What is your favorite blank to use for a half ounce jig? Oh, man. Um, you know, it depends on what I'm doing. I'm gonna have to pick a couple here because I, absolutely, it, it just depends what you're doing. Yeah. If I'm just out there fishing, a, you know, a ledge with a say a half ounce football head or casting a jig, maybe stroking a jig. Okay, absolutely, eight seventy four. You know, that's that's the go to. Sure. Now, if I'm fishing the, you know, maybe brush piles or or maybe skipping docks and something that I gotta get a fish out of real quick, mm -hmm. eight eighty five. For sure. Yeah, that's that's my two go tos. Now, do you ever, you know, because I know sometimes some guys will talk about, well, I'll throw you know, a half ounce jig or, or a three eighths jig on this rod if I'm throwing 12 pound tests, but if I go to 16 or 20, I'll go to this blank. And is, is that where you also make the decision to go from an 874 to 885 or? Yeah, somewhat, you know, if I'm throwing a half ounce jig, if I'm, most of the time you throw it on a little bit lighter line, um, if you're dragging it around. Sure. Um, so you might go to 12, and if you're, you're gonna do that 874, Right. Um, but any of that heavier stuff, that 20 pound test stuff, if you're you know, flipping reeds or docks or brush piles, or, you know, a lot of people skip, you know, flip a half ounce jig around, depends on where you're at in the country, Right. 885, you know. Absolutely, that's so, where you just take the drag and just, just tighten it down just a little bit. Yeah. And, and glue it yeah. down, so cool. Well, that's, that is great. Now, uh, we got a question here for a frog rod. What is your advice on a frog rod? So kind of walk us through, you know, uh, you know, length, power, grips, anything you got what's going through your mind on a frog rod, what you got there? It's kind of the same way. You know, if I'm fishing open water, if I'm skipping underneath trees or, you know, a lot of times you throw a frog around docks and things like that with braid. Sure. Um, 50 pound braid. I'm going to use 874. Okay. Um, it's got a little bit of tip in it and, and it's a little more easy to, to manage it. You know, if you're skipping underneath things, um, that's the rod I'm going to use. And the, and the sure. 885, if you're going to go over, you know, thick, heavy stuff, if you're throwing it over to cheese at Gunnersville or big, heavy mats. Right. Um, the thing about braid, everybody, you think you got to have this big, massive rod with braid, 
spray has no stretch at all. Sure. So if you aim your rod at him, it don't matter what rod you got, it's still that, that, that line's not getting any stretch in it, so it don't matter. Sure. So if you get in a jam, if you are using an 874 and he's hung up out there in the stuff, you can just aim that rod and just kind of pull your line back at it and try to get him out, manage him out. But one tip, if you get a fish hung up in cover, no matter if you're flipping or you're frogging, I never pull them out. I always go to them and, and dig them out. So yeah. you'll lose a lot of fish pulling them out. Exactly. You know, that's a great point. I think, Hunter, you know, we've We've all seen those rod pictures come in where, you know, about 30 inches up a rod blank on a, on a bigger rod, like an 874 or something, and it's just, it's blown up right there. And right. you're like, well, well, what happened? And somebody wants to take, you know, they've got, they got Tina out there. You know, they got a big one, and they're going to lean on it, and they're going to do this number. Right. That don't gonna, work out so good. They're going to do this, and it no. blows up right here in your hand. It's just, you know, the rod blanks are not always designed to flex here, and then also flex here, and then also flex there. So. If you're reaching, you know, we see this with guys fighting big tarpon on fly rods too. You know, you're fighting with a fly rod and he gets by the boat and it's like, he's right there. I really want to get him in here. And you reach out at this first guide and you want to do one of these deals. Yeah. And you wonder a, why you got a, a no multi piece no. rod. Yeah, because you're putting, you know, you're basically taking your, your pressure point, so to say, where your hand is and you're moving it up, you know, two foot and you're putting it on a part of the rod that does not need extra stress. So. Yeah, yeah, it's not really designed to do that. And of course, you made a good point. Tell us about, you know, because there is a difference in the action. Mm -hmm. And we always, and there's a lot of people and, and, you know, everybody's guilty of it, confusing action and power. But there is a little bit there with the action of a 874. Like you said, there's a little more tip, being yep. fast. Mm -hmm. And then the 885 is technically more moderate fast, right? Moderate fast, yeah. Yeah, and the, the you know the action is just how much the tip section of a rod deflects, right? Sure. So uh, you know, I, I would use our deflector graph right now, but I can't. Yeah. But you know, we'll say uh, you know, like you said, most of the the mag tapers they're mm -hmm. going to be a fast action. You know, they're going to have a lot of power of the butt, but they're going to be a fast action. You know, um, top water rods they might have an extra fast action. You know, which basically you know when you're walking the dog or you're you know using a pencil popper or whatever it may be. All you're doing is barely tapping that tip, and that that lure just goes, you know, it goes erratic, it goes nuts. Yep. With very little effort on, you know, your part. For sure. So the, the action actually has, for me at least, power does too, but action affects my decision on which rod blank to pick more times than not. It's a huge yeah. factor. Well, see, the, the easiest way to describe the 874 versus a, a 885, the 885 is, is like a miniature flipping stick. Yeah. So it don't have the action. I mean, it's more parabolic, strong parabolic bend, yeah. but it don't have that tip in it that, yeah. that 874 has got. So if you're trying to skip underneath trees and things, you don't have that tip. That's that's why you choose a little shorter rod with a little, little, little tip in it. It yeah. makes it a whole lot easier to skip things. Yeah. Well, yeah, and you know, that's a good point too, because I use the 885. I had mentioned earlier when you when I'm flipping a jig around reeds, just because I'm a little more accurate with a 7.4, mm -hmm. and I also don't need the power of the FP 936 or 937, because really I'm only dealing with maybe a little clump of buggy whips. I'm not always dealing with, you know, real mats and stuff that you really get hung up in, even though I've been hung a few times. <laughs> but, you know, having the 885, it, it helps for that. It is kind of a mini flipping stick. It's great for those that, that want to pitch that jig around a little, whether it's on, you know, 20 or 25 pound fluorocarbon or the 50 pound braid so that's that's great too so um all right let's talk about top water we'll switch gears a little bit here rich davis wants to know what is a go-to blank for throwing top water and of course we talked about that in the clip because hunter pretty much does the same thing you do with that blank and cut a little bit off but tell us about that yeah so uh, top water is a, a wide range i mean you've got poppers you've got prop baits you've got walking baits depends what Top water bait you're talking about. Sure. So, um, you know, for a prop bait, I, I actually even forgot the number I had the other day um, because it was a rod that I just took and cut the, the butt in off of. I said, this is going to be great for top water. Sure. You know, I sure. just had an extra one sitting in the corner. That's what I did. I believe it was an 873. Okay. Um, so I made it, which is, um, what is that, 7.3? Yep. So I made it 610. That one is actually a seven foot rod I made. Yeah, uh, it was an MBA 43. It was 843 that I made yeah, a 610 that's out what of. You've done. So yep. I, the reason I did that, I cut two inches off the butt end to make it a little shorter um, to throw a, a prop bait um, to make it more accurate, throw, throwing it in holes of high drill and, and yeah. target, you know, target casting. Uh, it worked great for a popper, worked great for a prop bait. Now, if I'm going to throw, say, a, a spook or something big, I'm going to put a 50 pound braid on, make longer casts, cover more water. I'm going I'm to go to a 7.3 action rod, maybe a power three the same way with braided line. Right. Um, 
it probably cut the butt in out of it just a little bit because when you're when you're working it you don't want it caught up in your jacket your shirt right. um i've been eating too many ribs so <laughs> skinny guy like you probably don't have that problem yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> i gotta wear so, two sweatshirts so to keep me warm so i start to get all that so i'm gonna cut a little bit out of the butt into that as well but um yeah, yeah depending on what top water you're throwing uh, there's there's you know two rods will probably get you done um i'm gonna go with a 610 and, and a, never hardly ever go over seven foot yeah yeah, and, and that, that's a great point. Yeah. I mean, that you know, you did that a, a long time ago, throwing the pony, and, yep. you know, a lot of the guys were like, well, you know, and, and you also sometimes have to tailor it a little bit to what boat you're fishing mm -hmm. on. You that's know? what's so cool about building your own stuff. Yeah. I mean, you build it the way you want it. Yeah. When you go buy it, you got to settle what they got. It's yeah, just like, like, well, that's uh, what they got. Let's well, have to deal with it. Yeah. You make your own, you just make it like you want it. Uh, absolutely. Cool. Yeah. So, you know, that, and that's great <laughs> because, you know, I... You know, whether the boat you fish out of or the boat I fish out of or whatever, sometimes you got different heights out of the water. If somebody's 5'9", if somebody's 6'2", or whatever, that, that's really what will get it dialed in. And, and, you know, whether you're doing a flipping stick yep. or you're doing a topwater bait, that is that is the deal. Um, let's, let's do... Let's do... I got one right here. Go ahead. Let's do, uh, let's do Tate. Tate asked... Uh, Terry, the best blank for deep diving crankbaits. And I know that's kind of a, that's also <laughs> that's, a little bit of a broad, you know, but. Uh, no, that's pretty, that's, that's really couple. easy. That's really yeah. easy. So um, if you're talking big deep diving crankbaits, yeah. uh, man, that 906 is pretty awesome. It's a, uh, you know, seven, six, anytime you're trying, it's, fishing's a lot like golfing. If you're trying to drive the ball a long ways, you get a long driver out. If you're trying to sure. be accurate you know, around the green, you got a pitch wedge, it's shorter sure. shot. So the same with fishing rods. If you're wanting to create distance, you get a long rod. Mm -hmm. So that 906, um, 76, yep. power six cranking rod, it will launch that thing. I mean, it, it'll just go out of sight. So sure. um, if I'm if I'm deep cranking and I want to create distance from them big ledges, that's what I got. Cool, good deal. And that's for crankbaits, what around, you know, 12, 15, 18 foot maybe? Yeah, anything less than that. If you step it back to, um, say a, a crankbait's go eight to 14. So, okay. um, say a, a Strat King Series 5, for example, sure. or a half ounce fat free shad or anything like that, here's what I do. I take a 906 mm -hmm. and I cut me about six inches out of the butt end of it. So now I got a seven foot rod. Okay. Because I'm not one, I'm, I don't have to make super long casts with it, but I'm, I'm trying to be more accurate. If I'm throwing around, you know, pilings or, or whatever, and it's manageable. You know, if you're, you're throwing a, a 14 foot crank or eight to 14 foot crank, but you don't need that distance. Right. You know, um, so I, I just take the same rod and I cut it down. It works really, really good. Perfect. Cool. Fantastic. Hunter, grab another one there, bud. So let's do, uh, oh, this is going to be a good one. So we're switching gears completely here. So Dan asks, what rod would you use to throw a slightly weighted fluke or a trick worm, uh, working it right under the surface? Well, I, I actually, I, I throw a trick worm a bunch. Yeah. And, and I take and clamp a number eight clamshell, which is a, a split shot on the nose of it. And I skip it under trees and docks and a lot of things like that, not just, not just working under the surface. When I do that, I do that on a 610 spinner rod. Okay. Um, I always braid, 10 pound braid, no matter what I'm throwing on a spinner rod, if it's drop shot, shake your head, or if I'm throwing a trick worm, whatever. Okay. I got 10 pound braid and I just change my leader, okay? Um, but that's the rod I use for that. I've got some rods rigged up for the Kissimmee chain right now. I've got some flukes and trick worms on them. Um, 873, 873.5, I actually got two of them rigged up that way. So, uh, which is probably a little heavy for that. Because um, that style of bait, you don't need a whole lot of rod. I mean, you're not penetrating a whole bunch of plastic, exactly. you, you know. Sure. So, I'm in a high drill. Uh, it's, it's heavy hitters, man. I'm going for big fish. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. So I got a little bit heavier rod, but um, if I had to pick one, just it depends if you're a spinning rod guy or a bait casting guy. So. Yeah. Um, but you know, the great part about you mentioned about that 873.5 is these blanks do not know whether they're supposed to be built as a spinning rod or a casting rod. So whether I've got an 873.5, I'm sure you probably have one built as a spinning and built as a casting. I've got, you know, an SJ842 that's casting and one that's spinning, depending on what I'm doing with it. We've got a really great rod in the Elite Pro Series. It's not, it's a 7 seven zero medium okay. heavy. Okay. Uh, I don't know the number on it. I don't sure. know if you do or not. Yep. Uh, I've got several of those, and that's probably the rod to use for doing that. Yep. No. So, and, and to that... You know, you were talking about with the split shot and all that stuff. I mean, growing up on the St. John's River, fishing all those docks, you know, you can choose whether it's an SJ-42, which is, you know, that seven footer, it's a great all around. You run your 10 pound braid, and if you're around dock pilings, you step up that leader a little more. If you're not around dock pilings, you can thin it out a little bit. You can do a lot of different things with those blanks, and 
you can still build as a casting rod. You don't so have to. Yeah. You can. But all my spinner rods are identical. They're 610 in yep. length, medium heavy action, and they all got 10 pound braid on them. So. That'll work. That'll work. <laughs> now, too, for a lot of these recommendations that Terry's given us here, you can go over to mudhole.com. He does have his uh, pro kit section. So he's got kits. Uh, we had mentioned this before. He's got crankbait kits. He's got flipping kits. He's got uh, spinning rod kits, whether they're uh, from the Elite X series, whether they're Elite Pro series, or they're just the standard MHX series. He's got a whole collection in there, and pretty much you can go on his Pro Tour kits page, and it would be just like walking out and getting on the front deck of that Triton and just looking down and going, yep, they're all here. <laughs> so, absolutely. Um, let's see. Ba, 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 ba. I think you need to get uh, Jack's question up there. That's, that's a pretty good one. Yeah, I was eyeballing that one. Okay, so give me a do-it-all rod for the weekend or every other weekend kind of guy. Oh, man. Or a couple. Yeah, it's hard. Yeah. Down it's hard. I was going to say. I remember when I first started fishing, like, I'd work all week, fish on the weekends. I'd go fishing with four rods, five rods. Mm -hmm. And I had rods that would do everything, sure. you know. Um, I definitely had to have a, uh, a 874 in there because you could throw a Carolina rig with it, chatterbait, spinnerbait. Big worm, whatever you want, jig. Seven three heavy. Yeah. Eight seventy four. Yeah. That's yeah. you got You got definitely have, have to have one of those. Yep. Uh, without a doubt. I think you would agree with that as well. Absolutely. Yep. Yep. <laughs> I would have. Uh, Florida, you know, that's fishing around grass. Eight seventy four. Yep. Done. Period. Done. I would have. Uh, you go with an eight forty three. Yep. Might would cut it down a little bit. Sure. That would probably expand it a little bit because that's a yeah. seven foot medium heavy. So mm -hmm. you got your heavy at seven three. Now you got a seven foot medium heavy. Uh, cut it a little bit. That then you can. Do your top water, do your top you water, you your other stuff. small crankbaits, anything like that. Yeah. So, um, I don't know how many. How many we're we gonna pick? <laughs> I mean, those are, those <laughs> are two good. Ones. It's hard to go fishing with one. Yeah, right. Um, exactly. Now, of course, you got uh, you know probably. Now I could take a spinner rod, yep. put that braid on it, That's what I'm saying. and go fishing. Yeah. Now I can't go crank no. 6xd with it or nothing <laughs> no, but i mean <laughs> you can do a lot <laughs> but you can do a lot with it so. yeah I didn't, it all depends on what you're doing i feel for sure know, um i think i think that's a those are a yeah. couple great options there um let's see so you've been repairing for a while you've been building well i shouldn't say not for a while because you've been doing both for a while but you started repairing right I had, I and did. then and then you moved into building so ruben's got a question what is the biggest tip for a beginner rod builder. So what what is something in the last, you know, few years that you've noticed that, you know, because sometimes, you know, we see it and we live it all day long. And sometimes for somebody to go, hey, Hunter, what's the best tip for a beginner? And That's I, easy, man. That's easy. Don't be scared. Don't be go. scared to mess up. <laughs> sure. I, I mess up all the time. You don't see some of the first rods, when I, the first ones I built, I'm like, I got this, you know, I can do anything. Sure, sure. And they, uh, you go back, I still got them. And right. they work, still work good. But, the neat thing about it is, is no matter what they look like, they still work good. Yeah, yeah. yeah you still fish them. But what you'll realize is the more you build, the more your, your wraps will start looking better and, yeah. and, your, and your design work will look better. It just all comes together. It used to take me a long time to build a rod, you know, a couple of hours. Sure. Now I can, I put a grip and handle on in 10 minutes. I can wrap a rod in 20 minutes and it takes me 10 minutes to put epoxy on. So sure. <clears throat> the more you do, the easier it is. Yeah, <clears throat> absolutely. And you know, that's, that but, is, a great point too because you know we get some guys and you know we have that community on Facebook that's the Rod Builders Workshop and you know it's nice because people are very positive on there somebody said hey you know this is my first one please please go easy on me or whatever and yeah you know you'll see some in there with some thread gaps or some some stuff like that. I'll tell you a secret on that too go ahead. I, I... <clears throat> you'll see some thread gaps right but just like you said, it's going to fish. <laughs> you're going to enjoy it. You're going to catch that fish on a rod you built, and you're going to have a ball, even if your thread work or your epoxy work isn't perfect. So, so what I do, <clears throat> I'm not into building rods to make them look pretty and go have a show, you know. Sure. So I got a power wrapper at home. I don't have a lot of time to build rods. So right. when, I, when I wrap a rod, <clears throat> I lay all my guys down it, and I'll, when I wrap my wrap, I just go <laughs> with a power wrapper, and I don't, there's gaps in it. I don't even care what it looks like. Okay. Then I go back down. So I double wrap. Ah, nice. They're all filled in. Yep. Tie it off, you know, do my... Go to the next one. Yeah, go to the next one. I put my pockets out. Yeah, I don't care if you spend 30 minutes on yeah. a guide. 
Mine will look just as good as yours does. <laughs> <laughs> and it's super quick that way. I love so, it. Yeah, yeah absolutely. It's cool. yeah. The neat yeah. thing about building, it don't matter how you build them, they all work good. So. That's exactly right. And, you know, that is a great tip for the power wrapper. You know, for those that are wanting to speed up a little bit, want to take it to that next level, that RBS press. Man, I used to just sit there and poke them threads and like, golly, I'm, I'm terrible at this. And finally one day I said, grr, grr. I said, well, it looks good. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I put the epoxy on I said, it looks as good as anything I ever built. Run that pedal. Hmm. Exactly. Um, all right, so we've got a guy, let's see. Do you remember the old pistol grip days? Oh, yeah. So we've got uh, Sergeant Rocks looking there. I'm looking to build a pistol grip rod to use with my kayak. Any multi-purpose rod you would recommend? Could you see me in a kayak? <laughs> I mean, ugly. you know, I don't, <laughs> I don't want to say it had to be a big kayak. So, so here's there. the deal with pistol grips. Back in the day, I mean, that's what we had. Yeah. You know, when you was growing up, that's... These two rods was five and a half foot long. If you, a six foot rod was like was well, was long. Yeah. I mean, but it was all pistol grips. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, I remember my dad having the loose speed sticks. Yep. And that was the deal. Yeah. So if I was going to build a pistol grip, I would. I, I watched y'all on your your weight your your weight on your buddy rod. Yeah. I would probably weight the butt of my pistol grip. Sure. Because when you do that, your grip and your reel seat's all on the end of the rod, and everything's forward. So I would put a little, that's, that's tough, man. So I would put a little bit of weight back there. Yeah. Um, I really wouldn't use pistol grips today if, if you could get away with it. But if that's what you want, a lot of guys, that's what they like, you know, yeah. and, and we got them. So, um, well, the great thing though, too, is, is not only do we have pistol grip, but we do have some like four inch, just straight cork, or we yeah. have a four inch straight EVA. So yeah. we've got everything from four to 11. And then you don't have to use a pistol grip. But a lot of guys still like pistol grips, like throwing jerk baits and top water. Oh, sure. Because yeah. you got a handle that's not hitting you back here in your in your yeah. forearm. So, right. but I've got to warn you: if you do that, don't build a real long rod. You're gonna have things to be too heavy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you sure. you no, no longer in six foot. Right. So. Yeah, and we do have some in there, you know. And of course, you could get some uh, whether it's out of the the color series from CRB, or you can get some of the MHX blanks. You know, they're down in that six 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 foot range. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got. EVA and cork pistol grip, Correct. and uh, I think that's a good idea. Put a little, put a little weight in there. Yeah, I think you'll be good to go. Kind of weight a little bit so, and keep it under six foot. I think you'll be perfect. good. Well, Terry, I'm not going to keep you all night, bud. Um, we need to give away something. So we've got one of your pro tour kits, right? Yep. So. That is the big giveaway here. We've got somebody, I think we got them queued up, Jay, don't we, on that screen there? Can you see that bottom name there? Looks like Dylan Hocutt, if I'm pronouncing that right. I think that'll work. Dylan, Dylan Hocutt from Facebook. Facebook. There you go. So that is going to be the Terry Scroggins Pro Tour Kits. What we'll do is the guys out there in the war room, they will put up a link to your tour kit landing page. So it's got all the options on there. You'll be able to go through there, and uh, Dylan, you'll be able to pick anyone you want, and uh, we'll help you out. If you've got any questions, any recommendations, or any questions, and we can give you a recommendation, please slide in our DMs there on Facebook, and we'll help you out. There's some good stuff in there. There is some real good, good stuff. stuff yeah. Real good stuff in there, for sure. So, all right. Well, um, I can hear it pouring out there. I think. Just a little bit. I think. <laughs> I think. Um, you know, I, I know you're a busy man. You down here fishing heavy hitters. You joined us the other day. Uh, I, I appreciate it. Every time you come in, the road, it's fun coming here. I mean, like, <laughs> like this place is brand new, and I like every time I come here, I'm like, I see something different. So <laughs> That's it. If y'all are around this area, man, you got to swing by a mud hole and check it out. Yeah, I, we, like you said, we you know, just opened up the showroom back up. Uh, you know, come in, take a walk around. It's it's a cool place. You know. I'd, yep. We'll show you the penthouse. We'll show you the <laughs> the, uh, the war room in there and, and all that stuff. So, uh, Terry, though, man, good luck in the heavy hitter saying go out there and get you a big check, get yeah. you a big one. Got my work cut out for me tomorrow. Ab absolutely. <laughs> hey, like you said, you know, you catch a. Now, does the 9 2 that Mark Rose caught, do you have to beat that 9 2 or do you just have to beat the big one of the day? No, I got to beat that 9 2. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm fishing for big fish, you know. There you go. But hey, I can, we know that there's plenty of fish out <laughs> there. There's a lot of big fish in Kissimmee Chain. Yep. Bigger so than nine it's, it's, it's not safe for him right now. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, I, I wouldn't sleep too well tonight, Mr. Rose, even though you're, he's a great fisherman, but that nine two, yeah. On a spinner rod. That, that should, <laughs> should have like a pound to it, you know, just because it's He should, rod. he should get a little, yeah, uh, get a little bonus. A little there. extra five grand or something. So awesome. Well, guys, uh, thank you all very much for joining us here on the show. For the big show bass builds, uh, 
Be sure to run over to the Mud Hole Live Rod Builders Workshop after the show. We'll get in there. Hunter will be in there. I'll be in there. Uh, we'll be in there answering questions. If we didn't get to you on the show, we will certainly get to you there tomorrow. Put in some links and answer your question. Uh, but again, thank you very much for joining us here in the penthouse. The next show, we do not know the next show because we're going to lean on y'all a little bit. Um, it's a summer season. Y'all are traveling a little bit. You're getting on the water. You're fishing. Uh, do we need to do a show where we show y'all how to repair some stuff? Maybe you've torn up. Do we need to show y'all how to build something that you're going on a summer vacation or uh, just getting out on your local pond or, or maybe offshore? I, I might know. need to come back. I can fix some stuff. <laughs> that, he, that he can. He is Mr. Fix-It, Mr. DIY himself. So um, what you think, Hunter? Is that about it? Huh? I think that's got it. That is it. Congratulations to the winners again. We've got uh, Kevin Kyle Machado with the ECSM. Uh, we've got William Kennedy from YouTube with the Flip and Stick Multi Option, and of course, Dylan Hocutt with the Pro Tour Kit, Mr. Terry Scroggins Pro Tour Kit, that is. So, guys, congratulations. Thank you again for watching. Uh, from Taylor Guffey in the War Room, we got Nick and Jay on the ones and twos. I'm Chris Adams, and of course, Hunter McCamey, as always, the big show here. Thanks again, man. Hey, I see y'all around. We appreciate it. Yep. Yeah, see y'all next time, guys. Take care. <laughs>